Welcome back. We're taking a slight break from the Kellen Winslow Jr. case to talk about the Brenda V. Delgado case. Now, if you remember, we had breaking news just a few moments ago. She was found guilty and sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. That happened just 20 minutes of deliberation, one of the quickest verdicts I've ever seen. Now, as that case is done, we're moving on to the next component of that case. If you remember, Christopher Love, the hitman for hire who pulled the trigger, he was sentenced to death. But there's also Crystal Cortez. Now, both Christopher Love and Crystal Cortez testified against the defendant, Brenda Delgado, in this case, that led to her conviction. Well, Crystal, Crystal Cortez got a plea deal. Welcome back. So there we have just some of the impact statements. If you see some of the similarities between the two, it's actually the exact same people in the Brenda Delgado case who has spoken after she was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. And now I'm assuming they just walked down the hall and they're doing the same thing for Crystal Cortez. It appears that she did get the 35 years that was promised to her. Uh, then they had the ability to kind of a little bit of catharsis to, to speak about how Crystal Cortez's actions contributed to the death of their family member and how those ripple effects affected them going forward. Now, we're going to continue to monitor this sentencing. We now have our guest, Daryl B. Cohen. Daryl, how are you doing today? Good afternoon. How are you? I uh, can't complain. It's a great Friday here in New York. I'm hoping you're enjoying the same where you, where you are. Um, so we've seen a lot. I mean, today we started the day with, with no verdicts. And all of a sudden, we've got the Brenda Delgado case. She just got life in prison after 20 minutes of deliberating. I kind of want to ask you about that. We've, we've asked other seasoned attorneys as well. But 20 minutes of deliberation, is it as crazy as I think it is, or is this just a common practice? Neither. I don't think it's crazy, nor do I think it's a common practice. The jury obviously went in, and they believed that all of the evidence was against her. She didn't take the stand. And so they took a vote, elected a four-person came out with a verdict, and here we go. Yeah. So no, not at all unusual, something like this. Yeah, it seemed pretty open and shut. It, it, we're, the, the, the speed of the, of the trial happening only a few days, it seems like the jury got everything they needed to come to that decision. And to your point, it, it seems like they maybe probably walked into the room, said, hey, hands up if you think she's guilty. And that was that. Absolutely. There was nothing to deliberate. There was no defense, not really. So what are they going to deliberate? who the poor person's going to be, and they didn't even have time to get coffee or tea. Okay. Now, we're going to take a quick look at Ricardo, and I apologize for mispronouncing this, Penguia. This is actually the victim's boyfriend describing finding out about the shooting thereafter. Let's take a look. There you have Ricardo Pinagua, exactly the victim's boyfriend, describing finding out about the shooting for the first time. Now, Daryl, we know that this case is open and shut. It's done. She's been found guilty, given life in prison without parole. From the information that we've gotten from all of these witnesses, do you feel that, I guess the question is, is was justice served here for the murder of uh, Kendra Hatcher? How do you actually have justice? Here's a woman that was murdered for no reason at all. As much as our system will allow, yes, justice was served. As much as our system will allow, these people will be punished in the way that they should be punished. But can you bring her back? No. Was she an innocent victim? Yes. Was she someone that deserved to be killed because of what she was doing? No. So yes, justice was served as much as we can serve it. I would agree. And, and, and it's, it's heartbreaking, heart-wrenching to hear situations like this where this is a completely innocent person. I, I know we say innocent uh, can sometimes be of a, of a range how innocent a person is, but this is a person who did no wrong, no reason to deserve this. And here you have this very jealous and malicious person who murdered her. And it appears that, and we were saying earlier before you got on, it, she's the mastermind. And she also seems to have pulled uh, two other people in with her, specifically Christopher Love, who's getting life in prison, and Crystal Cortez, who we just saw get um, 35 years. Uh, I understand they couldn't seek the death penalty, but I agree with you that the, the most they could get is what they got, and that was life in prison without parole. Um, I, I guess it's, it's over and done with. This, this love triangle is done. I mean, we hope the, for the best for the family. Uh, in the victim impact statements, what did you hear in terms of the catharsis as the family saying, hey, this is what you did to my family, this is what, uh, how you affected us? How important is that for, for victims to get up in there and speak? Well, it's not really what I heard, it's what I saw. I saw the body language, I saw the facial expression. 
I listen to his inflection. It is so important because everyone is always looking for closure. This is never going to be a case where there's closure. They're not going to go to sleep, close their mind. They're not going to wake up and close their mind. They're going to remember it forever. But they will remember that our justice system did everything it could to make a horrible decision, a horrible decision right. And there you can see on the, on the video there are both pictures of uh, the victim and also the mother. We always say a parent, mother, father should never have to bury their child. And it's a truly tragic situation when that occurs, especially for such a nonsensical and, and, and harsh uh, uh, reason. We're going to continue more with the updates of this case and the sentencing and more after this break. Daryl, I can't tell you how many times I've told my clients, and I know that you're a former district and former state attorney, these are recorded. Why are they, they talking on the phones except for I love you, um, how are the kids doing, goodbye? I mean, everything's recorded. Why are these people talking on the phone? Because you cannot legislate intelligence. You cannot <laughs> legislate someone actually opening their ears, listening to what you have to say, and paying attention to it. And that's probably why so many times we get convictions or enhancements to convictions because a defendant just doesn't listen. Look, there's something I've said forever. It's called KYD BMS. What does it stand for? Keep your damn big mouth shut. They don't listen. I might steal that. I, I, I like that. And it's interesting. I'm not sure how it works in South Carolina, but at least in New York City, when they pick up the phone, the first thing we hear is beep your conversations is, are being recorded. And as a defense attorney, you always inform your client of that. And, and I know that the prosecutors are always listening on their side. And this is probably some of the damning evidence that led to his conviction. That, as well as the baby's bodies being found, the statements that he gave to the FBI agent, it appears that the mountain of evidence led to this decision. And did you see any way that this could have gone any different way other than guilty? No. What I did see is he should have tried to enter a plea of guilty. Maybe he could have avoided the death penalty. But in this instance, both as a former prosecutor, as a current defense lawyer, and as a father, I would wish him a long, slow, and agonizing death. And what do I mean by that? If the jury comes back with a death penalty, then because of the time it takes for appeals, it will be long, slow, and agonizing. Yeah, let's listen to more of the testimony, specifically the South Carolina investigator describing finding the very bodies that Timothy Jones is accused of and convicted of killing. I mean, Dara, I try my best to be impartial. I try my best to be the public defender that I am at heart, but five children, ages eight to one, the manner in which they were killed, the manner in which their bodies were desecrated by this individual, uh, by driving them around his car. I. I can't imagine any other verdict but the death penalty. I, I can't see anyone splitting the baby, giving him the benefit of the doubt, anything. Uh, can you find any uh, testimony or any facts that might give mitigation as to what the defense attorney was asking in this case? As a former prosecutor in both Miami and in Atlanta, as a defense lawyer in Florida and Georgia, there is nothing that I can find that gives him a scintilla, not even a scintilla, of sympathy for what he did. There is no way to describe it other, other than what he did was beyond belief. I mean, I, I guess the only thing here is sometimes we ask the question, why not take the plea deal? Why not negotiate something before the trial to try to get death off the, off the table? Maybe there, there, it wasn't there. Maybe they weren't offering a, a plea that could have avoided this, this, this trial. And so the only Hail Mary they had was the insanity defense. I mean, we get to look at it 2020 and look, look back and say, hey, that wasn't a smart move. But was this the right choice for the defense attorney to take this to trial and maybe hope that a, that a jury finds him not guilty by reason of insanity? I don't know what he was thinking at any time. But I do know that if there was any plea deal offered which did not include capital punishment, then he should have taken it. On the other hand, if the prosecutor's office and the judge said, we're not taking a plea deal, this is going to trial, then his lawyers, by virtue of what they do for a living, were forced to try and give him an insanity defense 
that's about all there was because he entered a plea of guilty initially by admitting to what he did. He admitted to what he did. He entered a plea of guilty by doing what he did by virtue of the evidence that they found. How do you take two children, the last two that he testified or said that he strangled them with a belt? How do you do that? I don't know. Yeah. I just mm. don't. Neither do I. It's definitely at a loss of words. But we're going to continue to follow this case to figure out what the verdict will be after this break.